here are some common subjects for artists. I put together a few that would match the words on the left. Can you find the portrait? A portrait is a picture of a person. The still life are objects on a table that are still. A landscape, cityscape, and seascape are different kinds of outdoor scenes. Animals can be a subject for an artist, as can plants, abstract art, and non-objective art are two types of art that do not look realistic. They're more artistic, less realistic. Non-objective art doesn't even have an object in it, like the very first picture at the top. It's just lines, shapes, color, and design. Today, we're going to start with portrait. A portrait is a picture of a person. In this example, the artist drew this young girl. A self-portrait is a picture of me. That means the artist drew a picture of himself. You can see in the first example, the girl holding the picture was the artist, and the girl in the picture was the artist. They look alike. The middle picture is a self-portrait done by an artist named Vincent Van Gogh. And the one on the right is by a famous artist named Pablo Picasso. That's what he looked like. It's a self-portrait. During the drawing of your second grade self-portraits, you are going to show me that you can draw from observation. That means by looking closely at something and trying to match what you see. You can try to match the shape of your nose, your eyes, and your mouth to what you really look like, including your hair color and your eye color. Here are some very successful finished examples from second graders. We're only going to be drawing your head, neck, and shoulders. It's a close-up of your face. So please don't draw your whole body. Start large with your head so you don't have much room for anything except the neck and shoulders to be added. You might want to get a mirror so that you can be looking at your eyes, nose, mouth, hair, and face shape so you can make it look as much like you as possible. You're going to follow along with me, but not exactly because you don't look just like me and we want yours to look more like you. Hold your paper the tall direction and begin with the shape of your head. Notice I start by holding my pencil over the paper while I try some simple circles and then lower the pencil down when I'm ready to make a mark. It's an oval shape more than a circle. Because our face is symmetrical or the same on both halves, we're going to draw a line up the center of the oval. And please make these guidelines very, very light so they can be erased easily at the end. This guideline is for the eyes. I place it in the middle of my oval and I make two guidelines below the eyes where the nose and mouth will go. Try to keep them all spaced equally. Take a look at your eye in a mirror. Notice the shape of your eyelids, the color of your iris, the pupil in the center, and your eyelashes. We're going to draw this next. Let's begin by drawing the eyes on the guideline that we created for the eyes. Start by drawing a curved line above the guideline, leaving the space between both eyes that would represent about one more eye. Now draw a curved line below the guideline for a shape like an almond. Inside that almond shape, you're going to draw a circle that touches the top and the bottom with a pupil in the center. I'm making a mark for the eyebrows, and if you want to fill them in with some hair, you can do that now too. I'm skipping over the nose and going down to the mouth. Look in the mirror and take a look at your mouth. Look at your lips and see how thick they are and how wide they are. The mouth actually is about as long as the pupils. So from pupil to pupil, draw a curved line. And above that curved line, add an upper lip. Below that curved line, add a bottom lip. I find the nose to be the most challenging feature to draw. And many of my students feel the same way. Take a look at your nose in the mirror before trying to draw it on your paper. I'm going to begin by making a circle for the tip of my nose right on top of that guideline. And then the nostrils are sort of like a curved line, like a letter C on either side of the circle. If you feel your nose, it continues all the way up to your eyebrows. 
So you could even draw that line in. The ears are located between the pupil of the eye and the bottom of the nose. And they're even, and I just made mine uneven. So I'm going to go back with my eraser and try to fix the one that's too big. Next, we'll add the neck. We're going to make two lines that go down from the base of the ears to where the shirt would be. And I'll draw a curved line to represent the collar of the shirt. If your neck is too thin or too thick, you can fix it now with an eraser. We're going to include the shoulders, which could go off the page or down to the bottom of the paper. And now the hairline. Everybody's hairline is so different that I'll start off showing what it might look like with a boy's haircut that's very, very short. You need to take a look in the mirror and see what your hairstyle looks like and where it comes to your ears and how far it goes on your forehead. And everybody's is going to be so different. Take a look at a couple of these hairstyles and maybe if yours is similar to one of these, you can come back and draw from one of these pages in the video. I'll take my eraser and change the hairstyle up a little bit in case you have bangs. You might draw something like this. And you could even add a little more hair to your head so it doesn't look so plastered flat like this. And then here's how I would add more hair if you see a little bit behind your ears and coming down to your neck. You could add this. Now I'll get rid of the bangs and try a parted haircut. Some of you have this look. You might even cover over your ears. A lot of girls have hair so long you don't even see your ears. Just add more hair to cover over it. I'm using an eraser so my hair doesn't turn so dark. You might want to make blonde hair and you don't want it all filled in with that pencil mark. So you could erase some of that pencil. Okay, this is starting to look like a girl. And some girls have very, very long hair that might even come to the front of their shirt. So let's add some extra hair now. If you want to put in a ponytail, I would start with a scrunchie and draw the hair going to the side of the head. A ponytail that's behind your head wouldn't be seen from this view, so I wouldn't recommend it. You'll just look like you have no hair. I'm going to go ahead and erase that ponytail. I was just showing you that you might choose it for your option. When I color in my eyes, I like to start with pencil and decide where the highlights are going to be. So I'm going to leave a little white spot on both eyes for a shine and darken in around that shiny area. You'll see it better when I put the color down. Here I'm adding a few eyelashes to my upper eyelid. The circle that I used to draw the tip of my nose can be erased now and blend the lines together to look more natural. Before we complete this picture, we're going to want to erase any guidelines that were drawn in the beginning that are still showing now. We don't ever want to see the guidelines. You have now completed part one of the self-portrait lesson, drawing a picture of yourself. Save that picture and we'll come back next week to do part two which is to color it in. Welcome back to part two of your self-portrait project. Today we're going to start adding color. So we need to follow along 
with the video and see if we can make your self-portrait look as much like you as possible, matching your skin color, eye color, and hair color. We'll also color in the background behind you with whatever colors and designs you like. Sometimes it's helpful to look at some examples of artwork that turned out really well, just okay, and not so great. Take a look at these four examples and see why I gave them the number I did. Four and three are both very good, but number three looks like it could be a hair neater. When they colored in near the lines and the edges, it's a little bit messy. Number two has the arms out of proportion. They're way too small for the head and they're missing hands, and the ears don't quite look like ears either. Number one tried to include too much of the body and it's rather messy, and they really didn't take their time coloring in like they should have. Every time you do a project in art, always aim to make it a four. Let's continue on with your drawing from last week. Use a thin black marker to outline everything you drew. Notice when I outline the hair, I'm not going over every single pencil line, or the whole hair might turn rather dark, and maybe you want it to be blonde. So I'm going to just outline the edges of the hair and maybe put a few textured lines inside like this. Outline the chin, the shirt, and carefully outline the features of the face without filling them in with too much black. You could even add some extra details like uh, jewelry or designs on your shirt. Let's begin by finding a crayon that matches your skin tone. Maybe it says peach or beige or tan on the crayon. If you don't have any of these, you can always use brown and press lightly for varying shades of tan. Use the crayon very carefully so you're not causing lines when you color. You want to fill it in neat and evenly. Take your time. Don't rush. Don't go too fast. Fill in carefully. You can go right over the nose and the mouth, but when you get to the eyes, be very careful not to get any of that skin color into the eyes. We want the whites of the eyes to stay nice and bright and white. Be sure to color in the neck with the same skin color that you used for the face. Also, the ears should be the same skin color. Our lips are usually a bit darker than skin color, so you can add a little bit of red or pink or brown to give them a slightly darker value. When you're doing your eyes, you really need to make sure you use the correct eye color to match your real eyes. There's blue, green, brown, hazel, and combinations of these colors. Notice here how I left that highlight white to give it a shiny look on the eye. I'm going to combine two colors for my hair, brown and yellow, and try to make it a dirty blonde or a light brown. So I'm going to combine the two together on the hair, pressing lightly and seeing if I should add more yellow or more brown to make it match my hair color. You might want to do this with brown and black or brown and orange. I always suggest using crayons for the skin and for the hair because it looks way more natural than the markers. Markers can't be blended very well and it's great to blend colors when you're mixing skin color or hair color. In case you don't realize it, I'm not actually coloring this fast. I'm just speeding up the video so you don't have to wait for me to finish this entire picture. Never, never color this fast. It will not turn out neat. When you're doing your clothes, you should pick your favorite colors. And you're allowed to use markers for this because it will turn out a little darker and brighter than the hair and might have a nice contrast. I think I'll do my sleeves and my collar in pink and then I'll come back with purple marker and make some stripes in the middle of my shirt. What do you think of that? I would like you to come up with a fun, creative, innovative, new design for your background Instead of just filling it all in blue, you could make stripes, patterns, checkers, polka dots. Come up with something that you think is fun and fill your background. It could even be the American flag behind your head 
or any nation's flag. Tell us something about yourself with your background. Mine looks like it's full of underwater bubbles. I love that.